What's going on guys? Just want to do a quick uh, tabletop review of my Norinco Type 56 Chinese SKS that I have here. I acquired this bad boy from a sportsman's warehouse during the holidays. They were having a sale on these. Um, it's a military surplus gun, so you could imagine it was covered in cosmoline everywhere. Had to bring it home, um, take everything apart, clean it up really well, and uh, make sure it was safe. Uh, let me just show that it's clear. There's nothing in the chamber, nothing in the magazine, safe to manipulate. So, um, if you're gonna get a gun like this, you definitely gotta clean it up really good because cosmoline that's been in there over the years starts to get really hard. And if there's any cosmoline in um, the bolt where the firing pin rides on these things, um, you could potentially have a slam fire when you load around in here, it'll, you know, the frying pin will be stuck in the forward position. So when you release the bolt, it'll smack the back of the primer and, um, you could have a bad day. So just be careful, you know, if you get one of these, get it cleaned up and you'll be fine. They're generally very safe, but even after you clean it up, obviously, I always use the, you know, number one of the number one rules in firearms, I always point in a safe direction, you know. Um, and that's why, because things like that happen, people have died from that, from what I've been reading. So just be very careful, do your research before you get one of these. All right, now that I showed it's clear, I'll go ahead and demonstrate um, some of the features that this gun has. So right at the bat, this gun does have matching serial numbers on all the metal parts besides um, with the exception of the stock, obviously it's not metal, it's wood, but the matching, the serial number is matching on all the metal parts, all the main components, um, except for the stock, which wasn't a deal breaker for me. Um, I know a lot of the times they would replace the stocks on these because they would uh, break or whatever. And um, yeah, I mean, this one doesn't seem too beat up, but it, it was pretty dirty and, you know, pretty dark colored from all the cosmoline and stuff. I actually ended up, um, you know, when I brought this gun home, I removed the stock and sanded it down, cleaned it up, removed most of the cosmoline that I could off of there, and ended up resealing it again with a wood sealer. As you can see, it looks really good. Doesn't look too bad. Um, compared to before, it was really dark and just not very attractive. So, cleaned it up a little bit, but you can see it still has a lot of the things, a lot of things around the stock, which gives a character, obviously. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if this bad boy saw some action in the Vietnam War or not. Probably did, but who knows? Um, I'm not going to give you guys a serial number. I'm just going to tell you it's in the 14 uh, million. Um, it has the stamp over here for the, you know, factory number 26 in China. So this is the real deal right here, guys. This is a military surplus gun right here. I know when they started importing XKSs into the States, um, most of them, you know, were from, you know, military surplus guns, but they did make some uh, SKSs later on, you know, and uh, started importing them into the States and they were like the sporting SKSs. Some of them were um, magazine fed and whatnot, but this bad boy right here is definitely a uh, surplus gun for sure. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, this thing's a piece of history for sure. Uh, obviously, if you know the history behind the SKS, you know that the Russians created this. Mr. Uh, Sergei uh, Simonov or whatever his name was. Um, he knew what he was doing when he was, um, you know, creating this gun here back in the day. Um, towards the end of the war, you know, some Russian troops actually used SKSs against German troops. Um, when they were testing it, uh, a few years later, the AK-47 came out and these things were rendered obsolete. Um, the Russians ended up giving these, uh, well, the blueprints, if you could, if you may, to a lot of their, uh, communist counterparts around the area, you know, uh, they gave them to China. They actually helped China establish their, um, factory to make these things right here. So, um, that's how a lot of these ended up going to other countries. You know, I believe Yugoslavia has their own SKS, um, Russia, obviously the originals and the Chinese. I'm sure there's SKS is elsewhere. I just can't really think at the top of my head um, where other countries use these guns. 
they used to use these guns in Europe a lot in a lot of ceremonies and stuff. You know, their color guard details or whatever they use these still. Um, Chinese SKSs. These have the spike bayonet, where I like to call the really big uh, flathead screwdriver. <laughs> the reason why I like to call it that is because the front of the bayonet here is flattened out, so you know it can still get the job done. But you know, just if you ever work in your car, you need to get to a flathead screw somewhere really deep in the engine bay, just grab your SKS and stick it in there and start loosening the bolt, you know? <laughs> just a joke, obviously, but yep, that's pretty much what it is with these. They have the spike bay in there. Uh, some of the European SKSs, like, you know, from Russia or Yugoslavia or those countries, they have the blade bayonet. I believe in China, the, when, when they first started producing them, they also had a blade bayonet, but these, um, well, this one here has the spike. They went from the blade bayonet to the spike bayonet later on, later on in the years. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a it's a really simple concept, honestly. Um, it's a ga it's gas operated. You know, obviously it shoots around. The gases come up here in the gas tube, push the piston rod back, and then it hits the piston extension here, which works the action back, you know, magazine pushes another round up loads it into the chamber you know fires pretty much how this thing works um they're fairly easy to take apart and uh clean up pretty much you just remove this pin here the dust cover comes off we well, don't really remove it because it has a little notch in there that gets it stuck in there so you won't lose it uh you pull it out and this top part just comes off the recoil spring comes off the bolt group comes out and uh, yeah, it's good to uh, field strip that way. But if you want to take it further and clean it, like when you first get these, if it's a surplus gun, you definitely have to take it down more than just field, regular field strip because um, again, like I mentioned, these things have a lot of cosmoline and you really need to get the, the cosmoline out of the firing pin uh, channel and clean up the firing pin, clean up every piece of cosmoline that you can out of the action in order for these things to be safe, you know? Um, but yeah, uh, it's pretty simple. You know, after you move all those parts that I mentioned, um, you wanna come down here, the trigger assembly, you hit the little uh, takedown notch right here with a pin, it's really hard, but you know, just watch a video on how to take it apart. You pretty much just put it down on its back like this, grab a punch, you know, and then just press that and this will come off, the magazine will slide out and then you can slide your receiver off the stock. Um, and then, you know, to remove the gas, the gas tube over here, you switch this little lever here in the up position this way, and then you're able to pull out your gas tube, your piston comes out, and to remove the piston extension in under the sides here. Same deal, you gotta manipulate that lever a certain way, and then um, make sure you have your finger ready to catch that um, piston extension, because it is loaded under spring tension, and it will shoot out if you don't catch it. Um, very easy to use, you know, very easy to clean. So, you know, it's definitely a plus with these. I really like the safety on these things. Uh, it's right there. You can see it. Again, this gun's unloaded, so I'm just gonna go ahead and demonstrate. This is in the safe position now. So when it's, you know, on, on you can't fire it. So, you know, I'm, again, I'm not gonna press the trigger, I, even though I already made sure it's safe, just for the pur sole purpose of this video. But pretty much, you know, you push the safety down and then you're able to fire it. So that's pretty much how that guy works. Um, pretty much when the action comes forward, uh, there's a notch here in the receiver where the bolt locks into, you know, it's pretty solid lock up and then, you know, you're able to fire it when not. There's many ways of loading an SKS. Um, my preferred way is with a stripper clip, you pretty much have the action open, throw the stripper clip in there Push the rounds in, move the stripper clip, run that bolt forward, and it's good to go. Um, you can get really quick with that, actually, if you really practice with these. It's really easy once you get more practice in. Um, or, you know, you could load it by hand um, from the top, throw it in there. But my preferred method for having this gun in the house, you know, because I would use this for home defense if I needed to, because I know it's going to work. My preferred way to keep this in the house, 
The way to, to load it to keep it in the house, ready to use, is I open up the magazine, put it on its back, and I load the rounds in here with the bolt close, and that will pretty much allow you to have a loaded magazine without a loaded firearm, pretty much without having a round loaded in the chamber, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you know, you wanna be safe with these, you know, keep it in a, in a safe somewhere where, you know, a kid can't get to it or whatever. Um, but you know, I don't need to tell you that if you're a gun owner, you should already know those rules. So yeah, there's, there's, those are the three main ways to load these, you know, with a stripper clip, you load it from the bottom, you load it from the top, you know, manually, you can do it. Um, you know, they do have some of these versions, some of these SKSs that are magazine fed. I personally don't really like them because I've heard people uh, say that they're kind of, some of them are kind of finicky. Um, plus if you live in a banned state, you know, like me in California, you know, this actually uh, qualifies for an approved firearm, you know, in these states because they don't have the evil features. It's like a, pretty much like a hunting style rifle, if you may. But um, I mean, this is a, this is a weapon of war, so. You could technically use this for home defense all day long and be perfectly fine if you practice with it. Um, you can use it to hunt, you know, if you have property or whatever, you know, very good ranch gun to have. Um, 7.62 by 39, this guy right here is the AK, same as the AK round. This was, I believe, one of the first guns ever made to use that round right there. Um, as you know, 7.62 by 39, it's no joke, it'll put any two or four legged. You know predator down no problem um <clears throat> it's a good round you know definitely um the sights the rear side here is a ramp style sight obviously uh, it has different uh marks here for from 100 to a thousand meters obviously with a 762 by 39 you'll really be pushing it uh to get out to a thousand meters with this um i'm sure you can maybe if you really practice but when they created the SKS, um, they did a lot of research, you know, for sure. Um, and they realized a lot of the, you know, conflicts between troops were within two to 300 meters. So they needed a intermediate cartridge uh, gun. And that's when they came up with this one right here. Um, yeah, you know, these, uh, these SKSs, uh, when they came out again, you know, they did see some action and well towards the end of the war too. The Russian troops uh, were using these towards the end. They did, you know, to test them out. And uh, from there, you know, they became obsolete after the K-47 came out and whatnot. And that's when the Russians started uh, passing over the blueprints of these guns to their communist uh, counterparts around the world. So yeah, um, this gun's in pretty good shape. Uh, for the most part after I restored it uh, One thing about these uh, guns you want to make sure you look into the barrel when you're before you buy one Because I've heard people buy some of these at and they say that they hardly have any rifling left So it's almost like a smooth bore gun almost like a shotgun pretty much a smooth bore uh, You don't want that you'll really be having shitty accuracy. So make sure you check that um, Make sure for you know check for part major um, you know, damage in the major components, you know, make sure there's no cracks anywhere or anything. But for the most part, you know, these things, if they've been in a crate with custom lane, they'll be fine, you know. But it's something to look at, you know. Um, front side here, uh, pretty easy to use. Um, some of these, you know, you could use the, um, you could adjust the windage on this one and the elevation. So if you have a tool to push this, the side assembly here from side to side, or you come up from the top and turn it to go up or down. You know, very simple, easy to use. Um, a lot of times you don't really have to, uh, you might end up having to adjust the elevation on this uh, front post here. But other than that, you know, right at the box, I mean, these things have probably already been adjusted, but this one is kind of sideways, so I need to adjust it a little bit, but yeah, very easy to use. Um, if you come across if you come across a gun like this, pick it up if you can, because these things are only going up in price, and you know they only made so many of them, and when they're gone, they're gone. You're gonna be paying a pretty price to get one of these. So um, yeah, 
Thanks for watching, guys. And here it is. One last look.